to my channel my name's Jane and where have I been gosh I've been missing quite a few weeks I've so missed sitting chatting to you as you probably guessed I've got quite a lot to share with you over these past few weeks where I've been missing in action so if you fancy a nice cozy chat with me grab a coffee I've got mine and I'll see you after this intro <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, coffee. So I hope everybody's doing well. I'm absolutely fine. I have had a busy few weeks. I haven't been able to sit behind this camera because of a few things that's been going on, which I'm going to share with you in this vlog. But I do hope everybody has been keeping okay and not long till the festive season. So where have I been? Well, a few weeks ago, John wasn't very well. He was off colour like for a few days and he just just wasn't himself. And he was like, he is tired quite a lot anyway, but he was more, more so tired and he wasn't very responsive. He wasn't really responding to anything I was saying. He was just looked really vacant and sometimes he was confused and he was like going to the toilet, like weeing um, quite a lot. And I was thinking, this reminds me of when he went in hospital last year with pneumonia, very similar, confusion, weighing a lot, and apparently that's a sign of an infection going on. So I just like monitored him, I was getting quite worried about him, and then our, my daughter, our daughter Sophie came and said, Mum, Dad's not right, you should ring, you know, ring the hospital type of thing, and I went, oh no, I'm not ringing the hospital, he's not going to hospital again, not unless he has to, um, I'll just keep an eye on it for 24 hours if he doesn't improve. He didn't have a temperature, kept taking his temperature. He didn't have a temperature or anything like that. So I thought, well, I'll keep my eye on him 24 hours and if he doesn't improve the next day, which would be in the Sunday, I will ring like 111, which is our not quite 999. Our emergency number is 999 here in the UK. And we have 111, which is like the next stage down and people on the phone like guide you what you need to do type of thing. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll leave it 24 hours. So then my, when I, one of our sons came a few hours later and he said, oh, Tom, he said, Mum, Dad's, Dad's not right. We had to both help him get to the loo. He didn't know what he was doing. Um, he couldn't walk. It's just, it took us absolutely ages using his frame. Me and our Tom, my dad came over because he was worried. And Tom said, you, you, you need to do something. I said, well, no, I don't want him to go in the hospital. Well, let's, let's get him to lie down. So we got him to the loo, got him to lie down. And then Tom went and said, ring me if you need me. And then our Sophie um, rang me and said, how's dad? I said, oh, I'm not sure. Should mum ring that? Anyway, so she came back over, because she only lives around the corner. She came back over and said, mum, you need to ring 111. So I thought, okay, yeah, he's not getting any better. So I rang 111 and 40 minute wait in a queue before you got through to anybody. And our Sophie said, mum, Hang up, dial 999. I said, I'm not dialing 999. It's not like an emergency. The bit, you know, the emergency service is busy enough. Mom and Sophie said, Mum, ring 999. So rang 999. I said, Well, will you ring 999? Because I don't like ringing. I hate ringing 999. You just feel, I feel as if it's like I'm wasting people's time. Anyway, so she rang 999. And as soon as she said, The dad's confused, weighing a lot, um, not himself, they immediately sent the ambulance and literally the ambulance was here within five minutes and they came in took all his you know all his um you know vital signs whatever they call it you know the um blood pressure oxygen and all that and temperature and they just said yeah he's definitely got a bit of a temperature and it looks like sepsis and i'm like sepsis where's he got sepsis from type of thing so they bundled him into the ambulance and uh, i had to follow in the car because obviously if i went in the ambulance i wouldn't have no transport to come back so sophie went with him in the ambulance i went in the car and uh, by the time i got in the car the ambulance was like gone i thought well i'll be able to follow the ambulance the ambulance was nowhere to be seen i thought where's where's the ambulance gone sure enough um his he was like going downhill in the ambulance so they put the blues on, the blues and twos, whatever it's called, and they were there in no time. That's why I, I couldn't, I couldn't follow them. Anyway, when I got there, I was so he's waiting for me, and he was in emergency, and you know what have you, and getting him stable, got a drip on him, 
and um, took all the tests and what have you. So I managed to stay with him until I was there nine hours until I got him a bed. And uh, yeah, they said it was sepsis. So he was on then a course of antibiotics and uh, yeah, I was worried, absolutely worried sick because I didn't realise sepsis is quite quite dangerous. Um, you know, if it gets a hold of you, if you don't catch it in time, it, you know, it can attack your vital organs and oof, could have been, could have been a disaster. So he was in hospital again, God bless him. And obviously I couldn't go and visit him because of COVID and I know nobody else can go and visit the loved ones. And it's just absolutely awful, and especially because John's older and he, ha he's, you know, and he was confused as well, which didn't help. So when I was trying to ring his mobile, he's not much cop. He's not much cop answering the phone as it is. He always presses the wrong button. Uh, so I couldn't get hold of him and obviously I was speaking to the ward and the wards were busy and the, the ward phones were ringing and he couldn't get through and oh it was her absolutely horrendous and I just wanted her to go and sit with him and of course he was wondering where I was, he was getting upset, oh it was, oh, it was awful. He was in there another week, good week again, but then they sent him, they sent, obviously they sent him home um, with continue with his course of antibiotics but I did manage to get two visits. Uh, the ward that he got moved to from the first ward, it was called the green ward, we have green, wa green wards and the red wards, obviously the red wards are people who aren't very well and they've also got Covid, not necessarily the Covid ward, people who are really bad with Covid but people who've got Covid and other things type of thing, they're the red wards I think and the green wards are people who aren't very well, there's no Covid. So when John was moved on to a, a green ward, the ward sister said, yeah, you can come and visit. We're, we're only allowing two visitors uh, per the hall of the ward. I think there's 12 rooms in all the wards and there's four beds to each room. So it's quite a lot. So only two visitors. She said, oh, we're fully booked for like a few days. And then she said, oh, I found a, somebody's rang and said, they can't come. Would you like to come in like an hour? And I went, well, yes, would I not? So then I took him a bag full of stuff and what have you and uh, he was really pleased to see me so that was that was nice and then I managed to get another visit the day after um, to sit with him but while he was in hospital which was absolutely awful I got the dreaded call at eight o'clock at night on the house phone I was thinking house phone nobody nobody rings a house phone it's mobiles and it was the hospital my heart just sank hi this is the hospital ringing on behalf of your husband. Don't worry, but he's had a fall and he's hit his head. He's got out of bed and fell and hit his head and cracked all the back of his head. And he was going to, they were going to send him down for a CT scan to make sure it was okay. I was like, oh my Lord. I said, I did say to you, he does fall a lot. You know, you've got to keep your eye on him, but I think they just don't have the, the time to keep their eye on all the patients. Like I keep my eye on John here at home, if you know what I mean. So that was a bit of a worry anyway, came back, it was fine. When he did come home, he was absolutely covered in bruises, where he's obviously had a few knocks, getting up and out of bed and maybe struggling to go to the bathroom and what have you. He was a massive one here, um, like one there, and then he had like a mark on his head and then he had the mark there where he'd hit and fell his head. So he was, I said, what have you done all these on, John? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, so I don't know, so, oh. Worry, I was absolutely worried sick and I was while John was in hospital I thought well to take my mind off things I'll come and sit behind the camera and chat to you lovely lovely people but I just could I just I just couldn't I just couldn't I was just too worried to even sit and chat I was me you know totally worried I uh, couldn't do any sewing I didn't get I was four days behind on my sewing because I just could not concentrate until I knew he was all right he was coming home and cause because you can't go and be there all the time you just don't know what's happening oh it was awful but he's home and he's just finished his course of antibiotics. I wouldn't say he's 100%, not quite. I would say he's maybe 65, 70%. But then again, he obviously is not the best of health as well because he's got, you know, those of you that follow me, you know, he's also got bowel cancer and he's also been uh, diagnosed with mixed dementia. Yeah, so he's not going to be 100% anyway. Uh, and his walking is pants now I say to him walking absolute pants his little legs just will not carry him so wherever he goes I'm like up where are you going what are you doing what do you want I'll get it for you type of thing because I'm absolutely panicking that he's gonna fall over and hurt himself again 
So that's that's the situation with John, but thank you for all your gorgeous comments and concerns over on my Instagram when I posted about him being in hospital. And uh, yeah, so he's home, safe and sound, where he belongs with me. But anyway, so all is good in our house again. And he's home and he's sat reading the paper and he's got a cup of coffee and a couple of cakes. So he's quite happy. So that was that. And then my hair, you didn't notice, my hair's all chopped. Uh, yeah, I actually went for it, took the plunge and got my hair cut. And if you remember, it was really, really long. So it's now just a lovely length, long enough length, I can still put it up. This is my first attempt at curling it. So it's not brilliant. I've got my curling ones out, burnt my fingers a few times because it's trying to do it in the mirror for those of you who curl your hair. It just, you can't, it's you like, you like this, so it's best to not look in the mirror and curl it, but then obviously you're not looking in the mirror and you curl it and you burn your fingers, so I've burnt my fingers a few times, but I will get the hang of it. But it was a bit of a debacle going to get my hair done, so when I went for the first, first cut and colour, I wanted my, my natural colour, mousy brown, but maybe with just a little bit of a lift and a bit of a zhuzh, and maybe some caramel tones putting in. Yeah, got it cut, lovely, but it, I came out almost burgundy red and I would just came home and looked in the mirror and I thought, I didn't really click when I was in the hair salon. I saw the fact that I, was, I had all this hair chopped off, I had quite a lot of hair chopped off and you know, it was shorter and it was curled and it was lovely because it did it lovely. So I didn't really look at the colour and when I got home I thought, why is my hair that burgundy? So I rang my daughter Sophie, because that was the salon I went to. I said, Sophie, my hair's red. And she said, oh, it's not. I said, it, it seriously is red. And when I sent her a picture of the sun, I stood in the garden with the sun, sh I popped some pictures up, with the sun shining and catching my hair, you could see how red it looked in the sun. It wasn't that red, but the sun made it look redder, but you can see there's red tones in it. I said, Sophie, I don't, I don't she said, well, I knew that one, but when I was doing the, your hair colour, mixing the colours, we didn't have the exact colour that was on the on the colour chart for you, what you wanted. So my boss said, mix this one with this one, and it'll come to the colour that I wanted. And she said, I knew when I was mixing it, it's, it's not going to work. Sure enough, it didn't work. So this, her boss said, don't worry, if it's not the colour you want, come back in. So I went back in the next day. And Sophie put a colour on and took that red out, which was a lot better. And then she put me like some caramel tones in, but she said, oh, do you want this like a caramel tone at the front? And I went, yeah, you know, whatever, judge it up a bit. But then I ended up, I just didn't like, it just looked like I had a stripe there. And when I went down to see your mum and dad, you know what your parents are like, they'll tell you, they'll tell you the truth. Straight away, my dad said, why have you got stripey hair? <laughs> Oh, thanks dad, I don't know, he said oh no, and I didn't like it either, so I said Sophie, you're not going to believe this, but there's any way I can come back in, and you can leave the stripe if you want, but put more in, so I went back the third time, and got it done, and I also asked for another inch taken off, just that fraction shorter, because I was liking, liking the shorter length, yeah, so I'm really pleased with my hair now so and I'm glad I did it I'm glad I took the plunge and ch chopped it off and a change is as good as a rest they said on this so yeah so that was my hair debacle to start off with but in the end third time lucky I got what exactly what I wanted I'm just looking at it in the monitor yeah and I really do like it so I'm just going to keep it this length and I've got an appointment rebooked I think it's the 21st of December a little bit of a trim if it needs it and just uh, you know just to lift uh, if my my colouring needs a boost or something like that so I'm looking forward to that and I'm going to keep it this length I think so because I've got a like best of both worlds I can wear it up put it still put it in a bun still faff about with it I can then but I can also wear it down and it's not too long it was way too long way too long so yeah that's my hair so that was that and then what else and then I've been busy doing all my custom orders for my clothing label and obviously I was four days behind so when John came home I wanted to really catch up. So all my orders are done, all orders are gone, gone to the post office, I worked non-stop to get them all out so if you still wanted to order the shop's still open but nothing will be made for in time for Christmas now, I'm going to like take the month of December off 
still I'll still make things but obviously they won't be coming out until the new year so I'm gonna slow down a bit take a little bit of, take a little bit of a breath catch my breath start again in the new year I need, I need to slow down a bit because I, I feel a little bit like whew, non-stop which is me 50 mile an hour Jane you know if you follow me you know I do everything 50 mile an hour don't sit still but yeah I just feel as if I need to maybe do a little bit of self-care that's you know type of thing maybe a little bit of things for me I've done hardly uh, hardly I don't think I've done any sewing for myself apart from the I'll show you which obviously is mine my version my copy the Peggy dress so yeah I made that but obviously I had to make one to take photographs for the shop and obviously this is mine so that's the only thing I've made for myself in probably about a month and I'm starting to get I'm starting to get withdrawal symptoms so I have got uh, so I've got a few things planned for some sewing for myself some proper selfish sewing for myself some winter outfit sewing plans so that's going to be on my next vlog I've got some lovely fabrics I've got some nice patterns I've got in mind some nice ideas um, so that will be coming next so I can't wait to get a little bit of me sewing and also some more sewing but some upcycle recycle type of sewing project coming up it's a kind of a saw the look which I've seen something on Pinterest absolutely loved it and you know at the moment we're all it's a big thing recycle upcycle you know reinvent things that you've already got in your wardrobe it's a kind of type of thing like that I won't reveal too much uh, but that's coming so I'm just looking at the pile shall we say there so I can't wait to show you that and then what am I wearing? Got... Oh yes, what I'm wearing. So if you remember a few vlogs back, I had that lovely um, thrifted charity shop haul that I managed to get all those gorgeous jumpers. This is one of them. I got four, four of these and um, that gorgeous jacket. I'll pop the card up for it as well. And this as well, if you remember, which they've all been, what I mean, they're the, honestly what's some of the best charity shop finds that I've found for a long time because I've worn all of them. This one I've worn and worn and worn and worn. Absolutely love it. Washes. John just called me there so I had to go and see what he wanted. Um, yeah, so this has washed like an absolute dream. Seriously, it hasn't gone bobbly or bitty. It hasn't lost its shape. It's just, I don't even know what wool this is, but it's a gorgeous sweater. Let me see what there's no labels so i don't know i don't even know where this jump is from there's no labels oh yes there is let's see let's just see i think it's marks oh it's not it's our old old shop that's closed down in the uk it's british home stores and it's 100 percent acrylic acrylic well i'll be so what i was gonna get on to was love these jumpers but the only thing i don't like about these jumpers and this could be the reason why the lady who gave them to the thrift store the reason was the if I roll, I mean I've got this I've got it rolled down but if you roll the neck I don't like I don't like that on me that neck shape I just I, I just feel it's a little bit constricting where this one is a lower neckline so when I do wear these jumpers obviously I've got it usually layered over something I've just got it layered over my um very old Freya top very very old but it's still perfect and wears still wearable so um, I've got it like layered and you can see the Freya top collar there um, so I've like rolled it down because I prefer it lower so what I'm thinking of doing is I know it's a bit of a risk I'm thinking of doing a little bit of a DIY on one of the jumpers now I've got the teal blue burnt rusty color I've got this caramel uh, burgundy so one of them not sure which one I love the teal well I love them all I might, I, well I'm going to, pick a colour, be brave, I'm going to pick one of them and I'm going to hack the neck, cut off this turtle neck part, so cut it off all the way to there and then just bind the neck and then hopefully that might make it a nicer neckline. So when I do that, I will obviously film it, what I'm doing. And show you the result and if it works on one then I'm going to do all four because I much prefer that lower neckline so that's the plan with these so yeah as I say I'm just wearing the caramel color I've just put more of my raggy brooches on and I've just got my Freya top 
and I've just got my jeans, brown belt, socks. I'm not going out today because I am waiting for the timber merchant to bring some timber because if you followed me on Instagram, over here in the UK, we had one massive storm this week. I mean, the biggest storm I've ever known in England over my roof. This storm was over my roof for about six, seven hours and it got gradually worse and um, it, it was literally, felt like I was in a tornado and it literally ripped all the side, one of our drive gates, all the full length side of the fence, ripped it all out, chucked it onto the car. Luckily the car, not damaged at all, so I don't know how that happened. I think it, I think it ripped it up and it just fell on the car and it didn't move because of the sheer weight. When I saw it, when I got up in the night and heard this oh, almighty crash bang wallet, I just thought, oh, the car, the car. Uh, but no, the car's not damaged at all. And all was left was the little side gate at the side of the house, this little gate on its own, it, n nothing attached to it. My garden is just trashed, totally trashed. Oh, all my plants broken, um, my lovely little solar lantern that hung from the summer house smashed to bits. Um, some of my uh, my bird bath smashed to bits. Some of my, my, my perennial shrubs just trashed off the fence. Oh, total disaster. So, but saying that, some of those shrubs needed cutting right back. And so in a way, it's not too bad. And they are perennials and I'm hoping they'll all bounce back. So I, my son, Tom, bless him, he's a joiner by trade. He came and dismantled, because the fence just came down in one massive piece. So he dismantled the, the fence that it could be saved. And today the timber merchant's coming with all the stuff. So I'm just waiting for them to come. So that was that. Part of my like slowing down and chilling out type of thing. I have retrieved my patchwork that I've been doing since the year, uh, I think it was 96, 1996 I started it, 25 years ago. I mean, that's ridiculous. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get it out and I'm gonna finish it once and for all and put it on our bed. And luckily, the colour scheme still goes with the colour scheme I've got in my bedroom, which is greens and burgundies, dusky roses, caramels. So luckily for me, it goes. It's actually what got me got me back in the zone was my mum's doing another one. My mum's done about four or five. She's really into hers and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get mine out. So I got the basket out, got the basket out with all my like, I'm doing the grandma's flower garden. Is it the granny's flower garden? Grandmother's flower garden, English paper piecing. And I'm doing, so I've made a hundred. This this is what I made 26 years ago. And then I never, I never did anything with it. So, uh, every one is different, if you know what I mean. Every one, there's, I think there's 12 different fabrics and there's not one that's the same. So I've made all these and I've got 118 of these and I've got, I've got plenty. Some of them are a bit creased because they've been in this basket that long. Covered in dust, covered in cat hair and good knows what else. The cats have been in the basket thinking it's a nice bed. So it's covered in cat hair, but the place just for me. Um, so yeah, so I've got 118 of these made up. I've still got the paper in them. Absolute tons of them. Yeah, I've still got the paper in them. So obviously you need to take the paper out, but not yet. So I've counted them all and there's 118. And there's only one I'm not going to use if I can find it. You watch, oh, there it is. There's only one I'm not going to use. And I don't know why I picked this fabric. I think it must have been just a fabric I had but it's the colour schemes, but I don't like the stripes in that because I just don't like the stripes. just don't think it goes, it just doesn't go. It doesn't go. So I won't be using that one. But all the others. And I can't wait to get, get going with it. So there are the like the rosettes, I call them the rosettes. So you've got one in the middle if you don't do patchwork or English paper piece and it's like the hexagon shape. So I've got one in the middle, six around there, and then you have 12 on the outside. So 19 hexagons per flower. Covered in cat hair, that one, goodness me. Um, yeah, so I can't wait. You can just join them all together and just have a random, but I'm gonna have it like an interlink 
and I've got this fabric, so I've probably got four, five meters in total of me interlink. So I'm going to interlink them all with the hexagon in the plane. So I've just got to cut all them out and sew them all and do that. So I can't wait now. So now this is my month and I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to spend some nice quality me time doing things for me this month. I kind of like a little self Christmas present to myself. So I'm going to do my patchwork, just some sewing for myself. Um, yeah, do some gardening, you know, things like that. So that is my patchwork quilting that I'm planning on doing. And I will obviously keep you updated on how I get on. I may even do a little mini, a little mini vlog of me sewing them together and showing you how I do it and put it on the bed and things like that. And if you'd be interested in seeing that, let me know in the box below. Now that is a good idea. I could do like a progress vlog showing you updates on how it's coming along because it's obviously it's a king size so it may take you know a couple of months for me to complete this so I might do a little uh, a vlog on my patchwork quilt. So yeah let me know what you think. I think I might enjoy doing that as well and showing you the progress on that. I mean this basket, this basket's dropping to bits. It's that old but yeah you probably notice I'm slightly sat in a slightly different, slightly position, different position. My industrial machine, my jack machine is now here. It was there. Just a tiny tweak, just a tiny move around and I promise, well, I said that last time didn't I? And I've probably said that the time before, but I, I think I can promise this time because there's no way I can move it around anymore because I have got myself a new cutting table and I shall show you that and um, it's just amazing. It is just my Calyx units laid down on the sides with the casters underneath and one of my two meter length Ikea desks that was along there, it was two meters long, I put it on there and I went to Ikea literally went to Ikea just for this desk, I didn't get anything else. Went to Ikea, picked this desk up, came all the way back and um, so that's on. So I've got two two metre desks, so it's two metres long in my cutting station now and it is one and a half metres wide, it's absolutely humongous. Brilliant and put my fabrics out. The cat, the cats can get up there and they don't get in the way because they like to be in, you know what the cats are like. So even when I get my fabrics out, they don't get in the way because there's plenty of room. So it's absolutely amazing. And you can see that my original size of the cutting station was by the green mat. And you can see how much bigger it is. And yeah, I love it, absolutely love it. It's just perfect. And I seem to have more space, which is really bizarre. You'd think I'd have less space, but I have, I've still got loads of room. I've got my computer there my TV there if I want to watch you know Netflix or something so that's done so I was pleased about that and I think that's it so far um, yeah so I think that's it for today so I think I'm going to wrap up today's vlog because I don't want it to be too long um, and I just wanted to check back in with you tell you that I'm absolutely fine and more importantly John is home safe and sound so yes, so hopefully when I speak to you on the next vlog, the fence will be all back up and I'll show you my fence because at the minute it's just carnage. And um, yes, I say, I'm gonna do a little bit of a DIY on my jumpers. I've got a lovely saw the look coming, not too much information on that. And I've also got some plans, sewing some winter wardrobe garments. So if you enjoyed today's vlog, please don't forget to give me that lovely thumbs up that you like it because it's probably good for my channel, it helps grow my channel and obviously if you just found me and you'd like to subscribe and follow along with me then please hit the subscribe and come on, come on over to Instagram and follow me there because you'll see my daily outfit inspirations of what I cobble together out of my little wardrobe and create different outfits with the clothes that I have made and thrifted so come over and say hi but until the next time thanks for joining me hope you drank your coffee I've got a bit left and I shall see you on my next vlog Bye for now.